Vincent Film Score. Ik hoef het je bijna niet te vertellen, maar omdat het het filmfestival is in Rotterdam, komen er grootheden naar de stad. Mensen die echt wel heel belangrijk zijn in de filmwereld. En een van die grootheden is Cliff Martinez. Hij was onder andere de drummer bij The Rattle Chili Peppers. Hij heeft gespeeld met Lydia Lunch, hij heeft gespeeld met Captain Beefheart. Het is in de muziek al een grootheid, maar in de filmwereld een nog grotere grootheid. En dat is omdat hij de soundtrack maakte van films zoals Drive, uh, The Neon Demon, Solaris. Echt van die soundtracks waarvan je weet van oh ja, maar dat heeft de film gemaakt. En nu is hij dus in Rotterdam en geeft hij een masterclass. En dat is voor mij een goede kans om die man eens een keer te vragen hoe maak je zulke geniale soundtracks en wat gaat hij ons leren tijdens de masterclass. Dus dat deed ik in de muziekwinkel, waar anders. Hey Cliff. Hi. Hi, Cesar. How's the festival been treating you? They serve champagne for breakfast, so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Let's start at the beginning. How do you start composing film music and film scores? For me, usually I uh, watch the film, talk to the director, see what you know, what his thoughts are about music. And then I usually lay on the couch and stare at the ceiling for a couple of weeks and <laughs> just wait for lightning to strike. <laughs> uh, it's hard to say where it comes from. It, it, but in film music, just a couple of good ideas go a long way. Okay, well, I understand that there are ideas to you, but for me as a soundtrack listener, I never understand like, oh my God, how did he get the idea to like, use the steel drums in this part? Drugs, like, straight up. Honestly, though? <laughs> <laughs> I usually have musical interests at the time I do a project, and yeah. I just, I just kind of force those ideas, I shoehorn them into the project one way or another. So during Solaris, what, what were the inspirations? Where do you, I had where just, do you steal from? I had <laughs> just bought these baritone steel drums from Trinidad. They were sitting in the living room, and I was thinking, what am I going to do with them? And then the phone rang, and I got the job to do Solaris. And I thought, okay. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my chance. I think I like this just because of the giant dimension of the bass drum. Is this something that if you would have it in your living room and you had a film score that you have to make, could you start working on the drums or? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, for me, if I can't hit it with a stick, I can't make any music at all. So yeah, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the film scores I've done kind of started with pounding on something. What else is needed for a good film score? I think good film scores are usually uh, the ones that have music flavored music. Yeah. For many years I did things that were just kind of atmospheric and textural. Everything was just like <laughs> Nowadays I, the film scores that I like a lot are the ones that kind of have um, you know, memorable melodic yeah. and harmonic material. I mean I think of a movie score a little bit like a song except um, most people don't watch a movie twice. A lot of people, most people listen to songs over and over and over. In a film, you're gonna see it once and that's it. So it's really important to have some theme material mm -hmm. that gets repeated throughout. Because um, otherwise, if you're just writing a new thing, a new thing, and a new thing, it just lacks the coherence that like a song People love songs because they're repetitive. My music teacher used to say, always give them the same thing but different. <laughs> that sounds like a good cheat code. The Drive soundtrack is very synth oriented. Mm -hmm. um, a synthesizer to me always have seemed like a, 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 a always seems like a spaceship machine. Like mm -hmm. you push a button and then something happens. Can you just explain the process a little to me? Well, I'm not a real synthesi synthesizer guy. In fact, for many years, anytime I did something with a synthesizer, the directors hated it. And then, oddly, when Drive came around, um, Nicholas wanted a real synthesizer sc score, so I got into it then. And um, I didn't know much about them, but um, these are analog synthesizers. You basically have these oscillators, which is kind of like a, a sound. 
you change it by subtracting brightness, basically. When you explain it like this, I do get it, but could you, make, could you, could you let me hear something? It's not even plugged in. Impressive. Is this one plugged in? Oh. Oh, I think okay. I did some, All I, right. I, okay. I accidentally composed something now. That would have gone a long way in one of my scores, what you just did. And why is that? Because I can take a little bit of something and stretch it out into something. <laughs> I mean, my whole process is mostly starting with something very simple and sculpting it into something that you can listen to for an hour and a half. I like what that one does. For me, the, the trick that I do to kind of bring, put some life into the music mm -hmm. is to constantly twist these knobs. I'll take a simple idea and uh, keep, the so keep the sound moving all the time by knob twisting. Usually the best things in, in my scores, I feel, are the, the accidents, the things that were mm -hmm. not in intended. So synthesizers are kind of the new punk rock for me. It's like an instrument I don't really understand, but because I don't understand it, it's fun to explore it. And most of the time, I don't know exactly what I'm going for. I don't hear something in my head, and I don't know what I want. I just know that when I hear it, I will like it. If I like it, then that's, that's what I was looking for. Is this what, what you're going to teach us in our master class? Is the master class going to be like the general? People will come there that are like honestly looking f towards like, like, uh, like a career in the film scoring industry. Oh, that's a very, it's a pretty reckless career choice. Yeah. So I don't want to steal your job, honestly, though, Cliff. Well, I don't encourage it. One, because I need the work, <laughs> and two, because it's just it's just a really a, a nearly impossible way to to make money because the law of um, supply and demand is such that uh, yeah, I don't recommend that anybody follow it. Well, there you have it. The be the best film score composer in the world says to like don't don't step into it. Don't bother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah stay away. <laughs>